Hello and welcome to Galaxy. We're your number one show for all things science and today Caitlin and I will talk to you about super bacteria, known as extremophiles. Let's start with a simple definition. Extremophiles are organisms able to survive and grow under extreme environmental conditions. We define these as conditions that would usually be detrimental to life processes. The key to this definition is growth. Extremophiles don't just survive in extreme conditions, they grow best in them. Environmental factors have a big impact on an organism's ability to grow. Hence why it is particularly interesting that extremophiles are able to reproduce at these extremes. Today we're going to focus on four factors, temperature, pH, water and oxygen. For a given environmental factor, each organism has a sweet spot a range of values at which it will grow most optimally. Too far above or too far below this range and no growth will occur. We class extremophiles based on where their ideal values sit. Organisms operate within cardinal temperatures, that is, their optimal temperature range. Bacteria are classified according to different names based upon the temperature range they operate within. Namely, psychrophile for extremely cold temperatures, mesophile for moderate temperatures, and thermophile for relatively high temperatures. An example of a psychrophile is Psychrobacter cryohelentis. This bacteria was isolated from samples obtained from the Siberian permafrost. Psychrophiles like these have had to overcome challenges such as reduced enzyme activity, intracellular ice formation, and decreased rates of transcription and translation. Regarding pH level, most organisms grow best in a neutral environment, so we call them neutrophiles. However, there are extremophiles at both ends of the pH scale. Those with low ideal pH values are called acidophiles, and those with high ideal pH values are called alkalophiles. Although bacteria don't have lungs like us humans, they conduct cellular respiration according to their different oxygen requirements. Extremophiles include anaerobic bacteria. That is those that grow in the absence of oxygen and can be further classified as obligate or facultative anaerobes. Helicobacter pylori is an example of a bacteria that grows best with very small amounts of oxygen available. So it is an aero, but it's called a micro aerophile because it can only deal with very small concentrations of oxygen. If it was exposed to the atmospheric levels of oxygen, it wouldn't be able to grow. Water activity refers to how much water is available to the cell. This can vary not just by how much water is present overall, but also what is dissolved in that water. High solid concentrations lead to low water availability. Most organisms can't grow below a water activity level of 0.9. Of course, extremophiles are the exception to the rule. Extremophiles are unique in that they have evolved in such a way that has allowed them to survive in seemingly inhospitable environments. It is this ability that makes them fascinating and the specific mechanisms by which this phenomena occurs is even more so to researchers. Information derived from extremophiles can be applied to scientific technology, and we're going to look at some examples of that now. Because they must withstand extreme environments, extremophiles produce molecules resistant to extreme conditions. We can apply these molecules in scientific procedures that require, for example, high temperatures that would denature most other biological molecules. A great example is TAC polymerase, derived from an extremophilic bacteria. And that bacteria is Thermus aquaticus. It's a thermophile that thrives at 70 degrees Celsius. We found it living in hot springs. As you can imagine, the tac polymerase derived from it is able to withstand high temperatures, like those necessary for the polymerase chain reaction. The discovery of this molecule has revolutionized molecular biology. Due to the unique ability of these extremophiles to survive in extreme conditions, astrobiologists are particularly interested in studying how they function. They theorize that because of their ability to live in extreme environments similar to those found on other planets, they may indeed be useful to introduce life on these planets. If you're interested in finding out more about this topic, great sources of additional information can be found here. This include fascinating live images of extremophiles inhabiting thermal vents, as well as extremophiles inhabiting seemingly impossible sub-zero temperatures. Thanks for tuning into Galaxy and have a great day.